The creatures in The Witcher might have come from myths and legends, but they don't look exactly like their traditional counterparts. They don't quite act like them either. These are the stories that inspired some of The Witcher's most fearsome beasts. Netflix's The Witcher opens with a swampy duel between Geralt of Rivia and the Kikimora, a hulking spider-like creature with an unsettling human head. While Geralt makes quick work of the beast, the Kikimora ends up getting the last laugh. Despite the Kikimora's ferocity, no one is willing to pay Geralt for its corpse, making all his effort futile. While the Kikimora battle makes for a great opening set piece, The Witcher's version of the creature, both in the series and in the games, is a very liberal take on the Kikimora legend. In Slavic mythology, a Kikimora is a house spirit that sneaks into your home via your keyhole in order to deliver bad news. Once a Kikimora settles in, it can also cause nightmares, sleep paralysis, and nighttime calamities like dying cattle and spoiled food. Don't ever look directly at a Kikimora either. Do so and you might die. Instead of a multi-legged monstrosity, a Kikimora typically looks like a mix between an old woman and a bird, complete with a beak and chicken legs and a headscarf wrapped around her stringy hair. Unlike Geralt, you typically don't kill them with a sword either. Just leave some food behind on the stove where Kikimori live. According to some legends, that'll do the trick. The Striga is Geralt's foe in Episode 3 of the series, Betrayer Moon and the Witcher, Andrei Sapchowski's very first Witcher story. On Netflix's The Witcher, the Striga looks like a giant humanoid monster, complete with a long, dangling umbilical cord. In Polish folklore, the Striga is no less dangerous, but it does work a little differently. Strigai were said to be people born with two souls, and who could be identified by their twin hearts or extra pairs of teeth. When a baby was born that people suspected was a Striga, they were banished. Then, one of their souls died and they became monsters, often with feathers and blue or gray skin, who transformed into owls to suck the blood of their victims. The Striga is one of the most dangerous creatures in Polish folklore, and it's not easy to get rid of them. Some people claim that cutting off a Striga's head and burying it far away from the body will get the job done, although burying one face down with a sickle around its neck is said to work too. The Witcher's fourth episode, A Banquet's Bastards and Burials, is based on the Brothers Grimm story Hans My Hedgehog. In that story, a child named Hans is born with the legs of a human and the body and head of a hedgehog. Years after his family casts him out, Hans runs across two lost kings in the forest. Hans offers to help them find their way, but for a price. Each ruler needs to give Hans the first thing that greets the king at the royal court upon his arrival home. That ends up being the princess, meaning Hans gets a beautiful wife for his trouble. Hans and Dooney, the cursed knight and the witcher, differ in a few subtle ways. While Dooney is as big as a man, Hans is more hedgehog-sized. He rides a rooster like a horse and is often mistaken for an animal. Further, Dooney simply transforms into a human. Hans' shift is a lot more gruesome. Not only does he physically shed his hedgehog skin, but after throwing it into the fire, his new human skin is charred black, requiring the aid of a local healer. The Dryads of Brokelone Forest don't mess around. Forced into hiding by humans and monsters, they fearsomely protect their land from intruders. They shoot Ciri's friend Dara before he can even reach the woods. They force all newcomers to drink the water of Brokelon, which kills anyone who harbors ill will against the forest and makes anyone who doesn't slowly forget their past. Accordingly, the Witcher's Dryads dress in armor and heavy makeup. They're imposing figures as they should be, and they resolutely stand their ground. Now, that's a big departure from the Dryads of Greek mythology where the creatures originated. In the original myths, Dryads, or nymphs who were tied to forest or trees, were actually known to be exceptionally shy. They didn't really fight, although some of them could transform from human-like creatures into trees. For the most part, dryads are passive figures in the Greek myths. It was up to the Witcher to give them some grit. Please, don't hurt me. In Rare Species, Geralt and Yaskir join a group of warriors who are competing to see who can kill a dragon first. Not only is the hunt that ensues full of twists and turns, but it's a big part of the Witcher's behind-the-scenes history. The story that the episode is based on, The Bounds of Reason, is an adaptation of the Polish folktale that inspired Sapkowski to create Geralt in the first place. The story of the Wawel dragon dates back to the 13th century, and while it takes many forms, some elements are always the same. There's always a king whose subjects are terrorized by a man-eating, cattle-devouring dragon. There are always brave brave knights who try to conquer the dragon in hopes of winning the princess's hand. They always fail. Finally, there's always a hero, usually depicted as a cobbler, who decides to use the dragon's own appetite against him. The cobbler fills a sheepskin with hay and sulfur, then waits for the dragon to eat it. That makes the dragon so thirsty that it drinks water until it literally explodes. It's one of Poland's most beloved stories. There's even a seven-headed statue commemorating the dragon in Krakow. But Sapkowski thought it was ridiculous. You wouldn't call a cobbler to kill a dragon, he figured. You'd call a professional. And so, the author invented a fictional monster hunter. And lo and behold, Geralt of Rivia was born. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about The Witcher are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.